Hey, how's it going, everybody? My name is Avery, and this is a second episode of our game tutorial series where we're making a game in Go using the Raylib library. In today's episode, we're going to be drawing some sprites and setting up some player input so you can control the player with the keyboard, basically. Um, so this is what we're going to have in a pretty short time, but by the end of this video. So let's just jump right into the code. I'll move into our directory that we created last time. And if you haven't already, make sure to have this asset pack downloaded. If you guys don't want to buy the full one, just get the free one. So we're using that and we're using Raylib. If you guys go to the Raylib website and then just under the Go version. And if you scroll down here, there's going to be a Go doc. And in here, there's going to be um, it basically list out all the functions. So I'm recovering over some of the functions that we're using for this today. So let's just open up the code from what we had last. It's going to be this right here. And here's what we have. So if you remember, we have our package. We load in the Raylib library. And in our main function, we initialize the window, set the target FPS, and we have a loop just to draw some text. So to get started, we can go ahead and we can remove this text. We'll cover that over in a different video a little bit more. And we'll create some basic functions for keeping track of the game's main loop, which is going to be taking an input, updating the game based on that input, and then drawing it to the screen. So we can have a function for input. And we'll fill that in soon. And a function for rendering and a function for updating. And then in here we should be able to take this and paste that into the rendering function. So now everything that needs to be rendered can be in here. So down here we can actually call these functions. We can do input, update, and render. So it should just be like that. We're also going to make a function for drawing the scene draw scene. So that way in the future when we want to set up a function for drawing a menu or drawing a pause menu or anything like that, we can switch between which one of those functions we want to call. So everything in between this right here is what's going to be drawn. So we can just do draw scene like that. Let's also go ahead and create some constant variables and just some regular variables. that will be created in here. We'll have a constant width. We can call it screen width. And we can set that to 1000 and a screen height. And we'll set that to 480. These are just some numbers we're playing around with. If you guys have better suggestions, um, go ahead and just mention in the comment section for what you guys think might look better. These two numbers are actually just based on this image that's just for the asset pack. So it doesn't actually really matter too much if you guys want to do something different. And then here, we'll create a function, we'll call it running. And we'll set running to true. So basically running is what's gonna keep track of our um, main game loop. So this right here is gonna be changed. So we'll just do, change this, and we can set it to uh, for running, basically. So while it's running, it'll make sure to work. In our update, we can go ahead and, oh, we can do running, equals the opposite of window should close. And I believe that's going to need an RL at the front. And that's all we need for that. We'll set up an init function and a quit function. The init function automatically should be called by go um, before the main function. If there's something similar to that for quitting, um, go ahead and leave in the comment section so we can get that working. But other than that, we're just going to call the quitting function. And that's because we're going to have textures and load in some images and some sound things eventually, and those things are going to be need to be discarded from memory whenever we quit. So that's what we'll do from there. Um, our initialization, let's just call that right here. So this init function should be ran right off the bat when the program runs. And then the close, we could just call it down here. And also in our init function, we don't want the player to be able to click escape to close the window. Um, maybe we'll set escape to like pause the game or something, but we don't want it to quit. 
So to do that, we just set exit key, and this is where you reassign the exit button. We'll change that to zero. So that way to close it, they just click the X button. So now that's set to zero, the escape button will make it so the window doesn't actually close anymore. Now we'll change our background color. Right here, we'll do background color oh, equals RL, new color. Then here you just part pass in the RGB and the alpha. So R, um, the background color is also just going to be based on this color right here. I used my color picker and I was able to get it. So it's just going to be 147, 211, and 196. And then the alpha will be 255. So that background color can be used down here. Whenever we clear the screen, we'll just use the background color. So BKG color, just like that. Now let's go ahead and test it and make sure everything's working. So go run. And here we have it. We have our window. It's the correct size. Click escape. It doesn't do anything. And it has that background color. So we can change this right here. Let's just change that to... Uh, I don't really have a name for the game or anything. But... No. Sproutlings. The name of the... This thing is Sproutlands. So let's call it that. Now let's go ahead and actually check out our textures that we've downloaded. I downloaded them and then I just, um, where do I have them? Oh, LS res. Okay, so um, let's copy it over. So it's gonna be under downloads and it's gonna be called Sprout Lines Back, yep, zip. And let's copy that into res. So now I have it in my resource directory, which I created, just res. I mean, you can call it whatever you want. It can be in the same directory as your game as well. Um, so let's move in there. And then just use whatever sort of unzip command or program that you have to open up the package. And I'll just unzip it. And so I have it in here. I'm just going to move this back. Okay. Let's remove that. Okay, so here we have all the files from it. Here's the README. It just... It's from the creator. I was making sure to um, show where the work comes from and whatnot, especially if you have the free version. But um, in here, we can look at the characters. There is the basic character sprite sheet. And let's blow that up a little bit. So we have the characters and the animations. We're not covering the animation stuff in this video. So for this one, we just need to draw this part right here. And there's some cows, there's some tools, and animations for those tools, and animations for him using the tools. And then there's also the objects, which has the furniture and plants and stuff like that. So you can go ahead and check those out. And the tile set just has the stuff for like the grass and whatnot. I've noticed there's spaces in between a lot of these names. I don't really like that. So as I go through and use them, I'll probably remove the spaces. So um, go ahead with that. Oh. I'll just move that in here. So uh, move character, what was that called? So basic character sprite sheet. That's the one that we're using. And that's going to be under that right there. Let's complete these spaces from it. Okay. And now this is the file that we're using the draw in the character. So down here we're going to create some textures. Um, we're also going to draw on some grass just to have a big texture in there. So we can call it grass sprite. And we'll do rl dot, or I guess this one's grass sprite, and we'll just do rl texture, just like that. And then in the init, we can do grass sprite equals rl dot load texture. Here's my resource, tile sets. And then grass.png. And we'll close it off just like that. And now that we have that in our draw scene, we can just go ahead and draw it. So there's a few different options for drawing things. Um, let's just look right here. Draw texture. So there's a bunch of different functions for drawing textures. Um, some of them take in different parameters, basically. Um, for this first one, we'll just use the default basic one, where we can just do rl.drawTexture. And we'll just pass in the texture. 
and then we'll pass in the position, the x and the y, and then a color. Um, the color is for shading or tinting it basically. So we'll just set that to 150, and we do, need to do color white. Um, actually, maybe it's just RL that white. Um, and the shading for the white is just uh, going to make it so there's no shading at all. So let's go ahead and make sure this is working. Oh, let's go back. Okay. And so texture, this should be texture 2D. And here we have it. We're drawing in the whole entire image for the grass, just like I showed at the example at the very beginning. And it's just like that. So now let's go ahead and also draw in our player. So we can do player sprite, RL texture 2D. All right, here we'll do RL draw texture player sprite, um, do 200, 200, then RL white. And then also in our, so we need to initialize it, but I was going to mention we also need to quit them. So player sprite equals RL dot load texture res characters. Let's see if I had a copy and paste still, if I do. So it's going to be basic character with a K sprite sheet dot PNG. And then here in our quit function, we'll do rl unload texture, and we'll do grass sprite. And we do the same thing for the player sprite as well. Player sprite, just like that. Now let's go ahead and run that again. And here we have it. We have our player drawn. As we mentioned before, we're not doing the animation stuff, but we only want to draw this. If you were to pop this image up in an image editor or look at the properties of the image, there's it's four by four, and each one of these spaces, including the blank areas, is 48 by 48 pixels. So that's just what we're going to do for right now. So we need to actually set up and tell it what part of the triangle or what part of the rectangle to draw. And to do that, there's other functions. We're going to be using the Draw Texture Pro. So we can just call that Pro. And basically, this is going to take in the texture the source of the image, so that's going to be where in the image we need to draw, its destination and an or origin, rotation, and the tint. So let's just set them here and then afterwards we're going to find them. So we can do player source, player desk, and then in here we can do rl new vector2, just because I don't want to create an actual vector for this, it's just going to be using the source. Well, not the source, it's going to be um, using the dest. So player dest width and player dest height. And then up here we can define these. So player source is going to be RL rectangle. And then player dest is RL rectangle. So we have these two rectangles created. Now we just need to define them. And we can define them in our init function down here. So it's just going to be player.x. You can find it this way. Um, same thing as we did earlier with, or we can just do, well, it's called player source. Or we can do rl.new triangle, or no, um, new rectangle. And then here we just pass in the parameters for the rectangle that we want to create. So we can do 200, or this is for the source. So we'll do 0, 0, and like we mentioned, the size of each one is 48. And this one will be player dest equals RL new rectangle. And then this is where we're going to draw it. So we'll just draw it at x and y, 200, and we can set the width and height of it to 100 just for now. Um, it's going to be how big it is. So this is how big the image is, but it's going to make it that big. And here, in here, we should be able to run it. Um, not enough arguments, so we need to have that. Okay, we also need the angle. So let's just set the angle to zero. And here we have it. We have our character. Now that we have our character, let's make it so you can move around. Um, as we mentioned, today we're covering the input stuff, not just 
the thing that we did at the beginning, the RL set exit, but we're gonna set up some controls. So let's just do that right in here. And to do that, we'll just do some if statements. We'll do if RL is key down. So if the key down, that means you're just holding it down and I'll do it. Or you can do if key pressed, but pressed only returns true if you clicked it down and then let go. So if we're moving, you don't wanna click it down a bunch of times, so we're just gonna do down. So it's gonna be RL key W, there's a period there. And that's where we're just gonna do WASD. We can also do the arrow keys. So we can do or, and then right here, we'll have the other option. And this one is gonna be up, just like that. And then up here, let's define a speed. Um, we can call it player speed. Now let's just set that to three. It needs to be a float 32, I believe. So now in here, we can change that. So player destination, y so minus equals player speed, just like that. So let's just go ahead and copy and paste these for the rest of them. So this one needs to be x, this one's x, that one will be plus, that one will be plus, this one is s, a, d, right, left, and down, just like that. So now we're just basically just checking to see if it's WSD or up, down, left, right, and then we're just moving it in those positions. Okay, and here we have it. it seems to work for both the keyboard inputs. Um, this is everything that we're covering in today's video. I hope the video is decently short. I don't want to have super long videos. I think it's a for the series at least. I think it's good to just cover small concepts at once. Um, this is everything that we have for this. But of course, I just want to quickly go over the stuff that we're doing in the next video. So cat to do. Um, we're going to set up some animations. So as the player moves around, it actually changes the different frames. And as he walks, it changes the frames as well. And then we'll just cover the fonts, the music, and the audio using the Raylib library. Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. Feel free to share it with your friends. And thanks again for watching. See you guys again next time. Bye.